And what I want to know is which keratometer is the most consistent for astigmatism. So we had 22 eyes. We did four measurements on each eye with nine different keratometers. That's a total of 792 readings. Go Tom. In fact, it was 1,280 some readings, but we had to delete eyes. Some patients didn't come in for all the readings, etc. cetera. Um, Tom is our tech that did all that. These eyes had no LASIK prior. And what we did is we measured the repeatability of the sphere, the astigmatism, and the axis. And I ranked the machines, I, I summed all of them and then ranked the, them based on standard deviation. And number one was the Lenstar. Number two was the Iowa Master 5.4. And we had nine machines, three of them were Iowa Master, three different versions. The Bosch and Low Manual, that's a standard manual keratometer uh, that's in our office. That was number three. The Javal was number six. And then the two Atlas machines, the 9000 is the most recent one. It did a little better than the other one. And the OrbScan 2 did not do very well. That's consistency. But I'd really like to know what about accuracy. Because a machine can be consistently wrong. And in fact, our Bosch and Loam keratometer was consistently wrong. It was nice and consistent, but it was, it was not very accurate. So how do we determine what's accurate? What I'd like is a ranking so that when the two give different readings, I know which one I can trust. And that's what this, this uh, study was for. I uh, don't trust company data, and so we did it ourselves. And this was a study that we just did in the last few weeks. And this is, uh, we compared five different machines. The Iowa Master, the Lenstar, the Atlas 9000, the Bosch and Loam manual keratometer, and the Javal manual keratometer. We have a hog stripe version on that. The first three machines are almost operator independent. Pretty much anybody who does it is going to get the same answer with these three machines. Takes a picture. They have to, the patient has to have a cornea that's moist, but otherwise it doesn't really matter. The next two, uh, these manual two, these are really a test of how well Tom did with them. And I would love to eliminate Tom's measurements. Uh, and because Tom is sitting here, I make that very clear, that the reason is because they're not the same as uh, Sandy's, Steve's, or Paul's, anybody else in the office. And they're handwritten. I have a take home point to this. I'd like you to remember the number 3.5. Now I'll come back to that and you'll see why 3.5 is really important when it comes to astigmatism and toric eye wells. And I had heard in Europe that there was a question of how accurate the K's were. So we did 100 consecutive patients with toric lenses with a minimum of 0.75 diopter of cylinder, we were blown away at how consistent Lenstar was. And I talked to Warren Hill, Kerry Solomon, Dr. Cook, and a handful of other people in the, in the last week who have reinforced our findings that the Ks are, are, are spot on. Now, having said that, I'm extremely honest and I'm extremely loose cannon. So whatever booth I'm in, they're always very nervous about what I'm going to say. And I will tell you that every one of these technologies has outliers that can get you into trouble. The averages are terrific. I will depend on Lenstar, and I'll put it up against Manual K by the best people in the country. I'll put it up against IOL Master in a heartbeat. I'll put it up against topography. It won't show me whether we're dealing with a regular or regular astigmatism, which is why you still need to do topography. But it will stand up, and if you look at averages, it's spot on. But don't look at averages. You can get screwed if you look at averages, right? You need to look at averages and outliers. And we found that every technology that we tested has outliers. Well, Warren Hill, who I enormously, enormously respect, I kind of think he walks on water when it comes to this stuff. Warren said to me a couple of months ago, Lenstar will not be able to compare with manual Ks. Nothing can. Well, I saw Warren yesterday and he said, 
I was wrong. Len Stark manual Ks are fantastic in a mount and an axis. The part that I really like um, a lot about this instrument is the keratometry. Again, we, we got this for a completely different reason, and uh, the Ks turned out to be a little bit of a surprise. They're probably the most consistent Ks we've ever seen. And one advantage of these Ks is if, with the new software, uh, David Cook has shown us that if the standard deviation is 0.34 diopters or, or better, um, you can use this for the Toric IOL as your only measuring device. This is the first time we've been able to say this about a automated device for the Toric IOL. So this is, this is huge as far as I'm concerned. Um, and we have David Cook and, and Bobby Osher to thank about that, to thank, to, to thank for those insights. So the Lenstar case, and Lenstar case can be used for the Toric IOL, which is just truly amazing. And I, I didn't even believe this at first when I first um, started looking at it. And uh, I'm very delighted that we have an instrument that can do this for us. So now, the, the points that I like about this particular machine, we get nine simultaneous measurements. Boom, they're done. It has some very unique uh, keratometry feature that was a total surprise to us. We did not expect these Ks to be this good. And the fact that we can use them for the Toric IOL came completely from left field. We were not looking for this, but just as we put the data in our spreadsheets and began to analyze the data, the correlation with the Toric IOL just popped right up out of the background, and that was a surprise. The anterior chamber depth is by optical biometry, which means it's very accurate. In fact, it's the most accurate way you can measure the anterior chamber depth. The lens thickness, again, is by optical biometry, very, very accurate. There's both software and operator flexibility. As I mentioned several times, you have access to every part of the measurement. You can validate it and adjust it if you want, and that's, that's huge. And one, one example of um, the software flexibility is it will import into and populate the data fields of the Holiday 2 formula. And what I like very much is the measurement head and the computer are completely separate. This comes with a Windows uh, operating system. And you can treat it just like any other Windows computer. You can put other things on it. Um, and uh, hopefully there'll be other applications that Hogstrite will be able to, uh, to offer and the, will link in with the uh, Lenstar software and make it sort of seamless. So that's what I like about the instrument. Again, we've had it for about a year. We're now using it pretty much for all of our surgery, and I think it's just a marvelous device. Noticing, David, for my cataract patients, probably the biggest challenge for me to nail Plano post-op is pre-op case. Our axial lengths are really accurate, our caps rex is good, incisions are pretty consistent, but it's that variability in measuring K. For every one day after my pre-op K is off, I get a one day after surprise. Yeah, there's, a, it, there's no question that the Ks are the issue in post-refractive as well as in regular ones. From my, pers my perspective, <laughs> sorry, from my perspective, the big thing is the astigmatism. Sure. I've looked at the Iowa Master Ks and the Ks from the Lensar, and, and in my book, they're the same. They're essentially the same as far as the sphere. But when you look at the astigmatism, the, the Iowa Master gives pretty good astigmatism, but the Lensar nails it. What do you mean, like for a toric lens, do you use that to judge your degree of astigmatism or the meridian? Yeah, if I, it depends. If the axis is lined up, the the lens star gives a standard deviation on every measurement. And if the standard deviation on the axis is within three and a half de degrees of each other, you can count on that. You can tell pretty accurately, I'm sure. And so if it's always giving you the same reading, all five of those readings measure the same thing, I put my astigmatism, I put my torque right lined up on that, and I'm right on the money. That's great. What about for spherical lens pad? Do you think it makes more sense to measure closer to the corneal center? I don't know the answer. You tell me. Well, yeah, I, I would imagine that you know, we look at our, our older machines, our manual keratometers, we started measuring out in the four, three and a half millimeter peripheral zone, and you know, then we're estimating the central power based on that. Hence the primary issue with post-LASIK eyes is that the central power doesn't really correlate as well with the more peripheral rings. So I think one of the nice things we'll get with the, the Hogstrite lens star is you're getting more readings and then also more central. So the two rings where you get the keratometry readings are 1.65 millimeters in diameter and 2.3 millimeters in diameter. Certainly a lot set closer to that center of the cornea, which we want ideally. Yeah. 
Time will tell on that one. I don't know the answer to that.